Now, I have no idea why this has become a narrative, but apparently there are a good amount of people that think I actually don't know how to calibrate a television. Now, I've gone ahead and put up my first video in this series of showing you how to calibrate to show you that it's not that hard and to, again, just educate and kind of help you maybe do what I do and what every other professional does when we do reference accurate calibrations because, spoiler alert, it's not that hard. That being said, though, today is another entry in that where we will show you how to be doing some autocal on the Samsung S95B. Spoiler alert, by the way, once you learn this method, you can apply it to almost every single Samsung in recent years. Hence, it's so easy to autocal. That being said, though, if you like these kinds of tutorials and videos to teach you how to do these things, to give you the knowledge and power to, again, stop hiring calibrators for 500 a pop and do it yourself by paying the 500 or whatever the case may be, 400 for the software or whatever, this is the route I would go. I'm going to go over gear. I'm going to go over software. I'm going to go over your alternatives, what you can do, and ultimately how you get it done with virtually zero effort whatsoever, which is why I don't really have a whole lot of respect for calibrators that charge 500 to sit down and do an autocal just because they know how to do something that you didn't know how to do or learn with software does not give them the right to overcharge you and today i will be bridging that gap by giving you the information so you don't have to pay them if you don't want to the choice is then yours okay so we're going to start by talking about some of the gear that i use now some have called this a toy color meter a fake color meter inaccurate this is an x right i1 display pro color meter now, I want you at the end of this video and during this video to see the delta errors we're going to get, which we'll go, we're going to go over if you're new to this, what a delta error is. And you'll tell me if that doesn't do the job. But this is the gear that I use. It's not expensive, which is why I tell you about this. You won't have to spend more than $300 on a, a color meter like this. You can use the X-Rite i1 Display Pro, or you can use this right here, the Color Checker Display Plus. This is a really good accurate color meter all of the same. And again, it is by the same people over at x -Rite. Now, on a bit of the more pricey side of things, we are going to be using the portrait display version of the Video Forge Pro, just so it integrates perfectly and seamlessly with Kalman and all that good stuff. Um, but again, what you want to do, power cable, data cable into the computer, HDMI cable. That's how you hook this up. This is a type of USB cable. It's like a micro USB. This is an HDMI, and this is the, just a little DC adapter. Very, very easy to hook up. And then all you have to do is put it on auto, which there's literally an auto button right here. It, it's literally that easy, right? And that's how you set up between the uh, test pattern generator, which when Kalman is running, it's going to generate all the patterns for you automatically so you don't have to do anything, okay? Otherwise, you'd have to manually shift in between each pattern, each window, each stimulus. That'd be a pain in the ass. So you don't want to do that. That's why you have one of these. Um, this is expensive. It's like $1,500 just for this piece. And again, color meter is $300. So you can see it's not cheap to do this, but it is doable, okay? Especially given the price of the TVs. If you don't want to hire anybody, you don't have to, okay? So this is, again, $300 color meter and not really that expensive. People will go crazy with $2,000, $10,000, $20,000, $30,000. You don't have to be a millionaire calibrator. I think I'll be the first one not to gatekeep and tell you that. Every other calibrator is gonna gatekeep and make it seem like you need millions of dollars of gear to get accurate results and you just don't. Now we're in Kalman right now and this is the uh, studio version, right? Um, so again, this is the $2,000 version of Kalman, $19.99 retails what you'll pay for this. It is expensive. You can buy $19.99 for Kalman, $1,500 for the test pattern generator, and $300 for the color meter. That's what it would cost to do the job that I'm doing, the exact way that I'm doing it. Or you could cheap out and get a different version of a Kalman that's for your particular model. It is entirely your choice as well. You don't have to, again, be a millionaire calibrator. So close that out. I don't really need that for what I'm doing right now. And what we're doing right now, we're gonna find our color meter, okay? And you just click find meter. Right now it's at simulated. Now you can go through all of this, you really can. I don't like to. If I notice that out of the gate in Kalman, my color meter doesn't pick up, I literally will close the program out and literally open it back up to ensure that my color meter works. And for those wondering, we aren't even on the most updated version of Kalman. This is the 2023 version. So again, I'm not even using, you know, the most up-to-date version of this because, again, if you want to stay updated, you'd need to pay 
uh, portrait displays five hundred dollars for their all access, and again, nobody's doing that. I'm not maintaining a five hundred dollar friggin' subscription. It, that's ridiculous. And again, especially when I don't need it. So again, it shows that this is simulated. So I probably have some connection issue on my end. So I'm gonna go ahead and solve that and then get back to you. Or maybe not. I'm thinking, I'm just gonna show you how to diagnose these issues if you notice that like your ma your meter is simulated. Because there is a couple of wires hook up, sometimes you can get a little forgetful and mess up some things. So as you saw, I closed Kalman open it again and it still says simulated. That means something's unplugged. Usually that's what that means. So all my mess of wire, right? Most people, again, want to gatekeep. They don't want to show you this side of it. Okay. I've got wires here. I've got wires running all over the place. I know this is the wire to my color meter. So I'm like, okay, this is the wire to my color meter. Trace it. Duh, 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 duh. Where did it go? All right. And there it is, not plugged in. That's usually what the problem is. Again, simple issues will trip you up during calibration. It's never really too many complex issues. You just gotta plug it in so you don't end up with issues like what I had. And then I'm gonna close out Kalman and open it back up because again, it truly is easier when you do it that way. You don't have to, but I like to close Kalman because once I close out Kalman and I open it back up, I know that it's going to work. So we go here, we open it back up, you'll see the version type, it'll start loading, and you'll see what I mean. It'll, it'll open pretty instantly. Uh, well, maybe not instantly, but you get the idea. It'll load, and then we'll be able to show you. But I wanna do this in a real-time fashion so you can see what the calibration process is actually like. Now, maybe if I wasn't forgetful, it wouldn't have happened like that, but that's what happened. And again, I don't really need the start session crap. I always close that out because I don't need that. I don't use that. Fuck that. Okay, so I'm going to close that out. Okay. Other calibrators have their way. This is mine. Again, raw XYZ already selected by default, which I love. And then X right, I1 display pro color meter. And then you'll know your color meter is on, by the way. Just a typical rule of thumb thing, too, uh, because you'll see that it will literally light up and tell you it's on. So I probably should have checked for that. But you know, again, when you have a lot of stuff to hook up and especially if you're making a YouTube video, you're going to get a little forgetful like I did, I tend to get and that's okay. So let's just kind of dive into a little bit more of what we were looking at here. And again, x right i1 display pro color meter. We're gonna open up and expand this tab. Pretty much, I'm just gonna save you a lot of work. Just use raw XYZ. That is the most accurate you could probably get for most TVs. Just just do it that way. Just just literally just do it that way. A lot of people have their opinions on what to do and all the workflow. Do not do OLED RGB. You don't need that. Raw XYZ will get you as accurate as you need for pretty much every TV type. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, that that's, that's really all you really have to do for that portion of it, at least setting up the color meter. Um, the test pattern generator already found automatically. I didn't have to do anything there. If you do, you'd go to find, you'd go to your source, and then you would go to your manufacturer, which mine is Spectracal, and then you'd go to Video Forge Pro and select what gear you have. That's really it. You have to know your gear. And then outside of that, we're gonna do direct display control. Now, this is how you get into the AutoCal portion. Um, it can be a little annoying and daunting, but don't let it intimidate you because it's really easy. So with the physical remote of the Samsung, um, what is it? Uh, S95D. We're going to open up our settings and then we're going to go into all settings. We're going to go down to connection. We're going to go over to network. And then in network, you want to make sure you go to expert settings and then you're going to make sure IP remote is enabled so you can get the IP address. And that's literally 90% of what you have to do outside of that. Then you go into network status. Then you go to IP settings. And then you're going to get your IP address, not the subnet mask, not the gateway, the IP address. Now, as you guys can clearly see, I have a 2022 QLED set up as the direct display control to it. You're gonna be like, that's not a QD OLED. I am well aware of that. Again, this is a wonky way of doing it, but again, it's the affordable way. And that's kind of what I'm showing you here today. Okay, so if you go into, let's say Samsung display, you wanna find your correct display. I have a couple set up already. Um, you can do this any litany of ways, but I go by the manufacturer, I go to the model number, and then let's say you want to do, let, let's say a 2022, like 8K version, right? It, it really won't matter. You're going to need to enter your IP address, okay, to which I'll just paste my IP address in, and then you hit connect. 
Once you hit connect, it's gonna do this loading thing and it's gonna think and it's gonna think and it's gonna take its sweet time. While it's doing this in the background, it's gonna work. I'm telling you, it's gonna freaking work for your TV. Like, it, I've done this so many times. It'll say display not found. Don't listen to that. That's total bullshit. It'll pop up a bunch of times like a massive error message because the truth is Kalman wants you to pay for their all access, which is a $500 software update. I mean, really, it's, it's, it's a maintenance thing that gives you all their updates. You don't need to do it that way. You don't have to do it that way. And I'm not gonna do it that way, right? Once you get past the a million and one fucking error messages, there you see it. It worked, okay? It is there. It's reading as such, okay? Then we're gonna go. I'm, I'm, I like to do the most current one, though. So I'm gonna go to my 2022 QLED that I have set here as the direct display control, okay? And there you go. It, it, there, there you go. Now, what you can do, what I like to personally do, is open my settings up and manually go in and ensure that I'm in filmmaker mode, not game mode or any of that dumb shit. So I'm going to have to turn off game mode and all that, which you can do. Do, 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 do. External device manager. Nope. We're going to go into game mode settings. It's on right now. I'm going to turn that shit off. It is now off. Then I'm gonna go into my picture mode. Right now it's eco. We're gonna to go to filmmaker mode. And then I'm just gonna go and make sure that while we're in filmmaker mode, I'm gonna do a full reset, okay? I'm in filmmaker mode. And I'm just going to do a full DDC reset. Once you do that, you hit yes. It'll do a full reset of all the calibrations and everything that filmmaker mode has. I'm doing this intentionally this way because, you know, it, it, it kind of has to happen. Um, and then once you do that, you're pretty much good to go. It'll take a long time again. It's like literally looking and reading and all that. But as you see, it does command the TV because it just got dimmer because it's doing the reset, which it's still doing currently, still thinking and all that, but it's working. So again, it will work it's a wonky way of doing this, I know, but you know what? I'm showing y'all some secret sauce that, again, gatekeeping ass calibrators are not going to show you. They do not care to show you. So I'm going to show you and put you on how we do this. Okay, so we're going to go to workflow. Then we're going to go over to display specific. Now, here's here's a tip to how this works, okay? Close Kalman. Okay, I'm teaching you how this works. They can patch this later on, but if you have an older version, you already got it. So close your Kalman. okay? Once you close your Kalman. You're going to boot it back up. Once Kalman boots back up, then you're going to immediately put in your color meter, test pattern generator, and then try to find your IP address for an older QLED television because it does not know at this point in time to distinguish one from the other. If you specifically start off first by going into open workflow and then you go into display specific, and then you go all the way down to where you have your Samsung or whatever the case may be, like AutoCal for Samsung here, you will not be able to get this to work. It won't work. The only way it works is if you, on boot up, put all the three information in, your color meter, your test pattern generator, and find your display first. Then go into a workflow. Only way this works. I'm, I cannot stress that's the only way this shit will work. But once it does work, you'll be able to see a lot of what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're going to do an SDR calibration because we are not in HDR, right? Okay, easy enough. And it'll ask you a couple different parameters. We want raw XYZ. This is the most accurate thing that you can use. No, we're not using a QD OLED thing, but we don't need it, right? Because raw XYZ is targeting everything you need it to target. And then it found the pattern, and it's going to tell you right here everything you need to know. And again, we can open up some panel settings here. Uh, we are already using a 10% window because we're using an OLED. So uh, we don't have to do anything else pretty much in that panel because, again, 10% is going to be what you want. And then, again, we've already found the display, so we don't have to do that again. And then from there, you can go to Next, or you can just go wherever and here again at the bottom I'm going to next again this is very wonky very long way of doing this but <clears throat> all your targets are already selected um, for maximum accuracy they say that you want to use the DEITP yes I know 
You can also use Delta Air 2000, but again, um, also in improved speed is what you get when you use the ICT CP. But again, as you see here, improved speed, some small trade offs in accuracy. But again, everybody's going to have their idea for how they want to do their auto cal. I mean, literally, you have a ton of options. I, I, I'm just going to do it the default way because I really, honest to God, do not care. Right? And then we're going to go to the next. Now, to ensure that this does work, we're going to have to read series. Read continuous will be blocked out. This is how you know it's working because it's not going to do a continuous readout. You're going to read the series. Okay. And then it'll say here, read series. You're going to click read series. You know it's working because look what's happening on the screen. You see that? So while there are so many calibrators, I could already hear there's like, that is not how you calibrate. That's not how you do it. I know how to jerry rig some shit. And and yeah, this is how we get it done around here. We don't we don't have to go doing all that like ultra crazy complicated shit. You don't have to. And look, it's taking the actual measurements and reading of your screen and showing your delta error and everything. Now, if what we remember about this TV, this is a Pantone validated color TV, blah 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 blah. Uh, look at your delta error. Average is 2.5 and the max is 3. This is already calibrated. You can't see anything below three. It's three or lower. So that this is calibrated. They kept true to that. Colors are not, as you see. Average delta error, 6.1 and 8.3. But this is what AutoCal is pretty much going to fix for us. So we don't have to do any of this shit ourselves. That's basically the essence of an auto calibration, which is why I think it's disgusting when people charge you for an auto calibration. It's fucking lazy. I mean, it just is. And, and here it'll go over some more of the finer things. Again, talking about your resets and all that shit. Yes, I've already reset my display, so I don't need to worry about that. And then again, you can do like a read series again, just so you can see what your luminance is. It's 169. That's just fine. I mean, people want to do 100 luminance. People like 150. I don't care. I think anything 170 or lower is fine. So we're going to continue forward and we're going to do it like so. The only thing I will double check and make sure is that we have our, what is that shit called? Our energy saving off because you do not want that on when you're doing this. Okay. And again, so many calibrators will gatekeep, gatekeep, gatekeep this shit. I'm not going to do that because I don't believe in gatekeeping. I think that's like one of the worst things you could possibly do. So now we're going to do the white balance. And this is where it kind of becomes really easy because, again, uh, I'm sorry, I said re read continuous in the last one. Auto cal is going to be grayed out for a couple back because you're, you don't need it for that. But you get what I mean there. You hit auto cal and look what happens. OK, it's going to pop up and it's going to tell you exactly what it's going to do. It's going to tell you exactly how it's going to go about doing that. It's going to do the two and uh, it's going to do the 20 and the 100%. Again, remember, this is what I told you in a prior video. That's usually what you want to do if you're not going to do anything else. But I'm kind of greedy when I do auto cal and I make it do that anyway. You're going to hit OK. Once you hit OK, it's game on. Because look, it's going. I mean, and because Samsung's white balance system works exactly the same in 2022 as it did in 2023, as it does in 2024, that's how you can get away with this. That's literally how. It doesn't matter whether it's a QLED, QD OLED, it doesn't matter. The white balance information, the way they go about white balance is the same. So when all the controls are the same, you can do this. And look, it's adjusting it in real time. You see it's equalizing all on its own. It'll take some time, but it'll get the job done. And this is one of those things where I say work smarter and not harder. Don't go spending all your money trying to have the best gear, getting what I call gas, gear acquisition syndrome. So many calibrators make the mistake of saying, I have to do it exactly the way Cowman says. It doesn't matter what this writing says, that it says it's a fucking 2022 uh, QLED. That doesn't matter because what it usually does when it does this, it's looking for a couple different things. The first is that you have QD OLED selected. I don't have the updated version, so I will never have QD OLED. Just use raw XYZ and you're fine. And then it will go about the white balance and grayscale correction the way Samsung TVs work. And as you can clearly see, AutoCal successful. And again, and this is on a direct display control. It's control the display. It's doing all the inputs and all the values. You see our Delta error. And again, it's it's literally doing it. And again, in real time, I'll just show this off because I think people would benefit from seeing this. 
you see the brightness is low and all that good stuff. You see sharpness is at zero and all that fun stuff. Okay. Um, so again, it's doing a lot of the heavy lifting for us and we don't have to do much. Go under white balance. And again, look it, it, it just did all of those values for us. We don't have to do anything. And look, just so you see, I'm not bullshitting. Every interval is basically zeroed out. This is default. I've done nothing to any of this. And so you see that it is actually going to adjust your grayscale. Watch what happens. It's going to go through all of these intervals and it is going to change the values of each and every last one of them to be exactly what we want. So I'm going to close this out. We're going to go back to our program. Okay. And we're going to go and we're going to click next. Okay. And next is basically the grayscale auto cal. This is again, super easy, as easy as auto cal, click a button. It's going to tell you exactly what it's going to do. And then you're going to go over and you're going to hit OK. Right. Once we hit OK, it's open season. It's game on. Because there it is on the screen right there. It's taking its measurements. It's taking its readings and it's going to do it for you. Now, there are people that will not like this video. There are people that won't like that. I'm showing you how to do it this way. But you know what? This way will get your TV looking reference accurate. You won't have to pay any extra money. It's not going to be different because we are not targeting LED parameters. We're targeting QD OLED parameters. And because we know how to run our software, we know what all these charts and graphs mean. We know how to use the tools at our disposal. We're going to do just damn it that. And once we do that, the picture we walk away with is going to be a calibrated picture. I mean, it's already calibrated because, again, filmmaker mode, reference accurate, Pantone validated colors, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what we're doing now is just refining that a little bit more and getting more out of our image with AutoCal. I cannot stress that it is literally this easy. You're, you're literally going to find every single calibrator from every single walk of life nowadays using AutoCal. Stop hiring these jokers. There, there is no reason to hire them. They don't know how to do this. And I'm telling you right now, this is where all the fun happens. This is where you start really getting into your creative side. And again, the magic happens. Now, this is going to take a while. So I'm going to let it keep doing its thing. And I'm going to come back once we're done with all of our points. So now for those that doubted me that this would work, it took six minutes, 11 seconds, 74 reads total. And look at us. We've got an auto cow that makes sense. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and click OK. And that's basically it. I mean, it's tracking the EOTF perfectly. It's got perfect luminance. I mean, everything across the board is like in the point threes and point ones and yada yada. And again, it's super easy and you don't have to do anything else. Now, what I've gotta do is get my remote to show you that this, that this actually did work. So with my remote, we're gonna open up picture settings on the Samsung S95D, go to filmmaker mode, go down to expert settings. We're gonna go all the way down into white balance, 20 point, and what do you know? All those stimulus that had nothing, we gotta go to 100 and everything, they now all have their own different values where they didn't have anything. This is how it equalized it. It now has its own values because this works. And again, just to say why this works, this works because when you have a TV that has a white balance system that has not ever changed, you're going to run into results like this. And again, the 20 point system of calibration hasn't changed like the two point year after year after year on Samsung. And that is why we can use the 2022 QLED again, not being very specific as to what it is. It's very broad. It's just a 2022 QLED. Well, we can still use that for a quantum.oled because we are using the raw XYZ again, generic CMF doing that will every day of the week be able to get you calibrated results. You don't have to go in all access and pay for the most updated version because a Samsung TV is a fucking Samsung TV is a Samsung TV. Now, unless they change this, if they change this, well, now you've got to go and pay for all access. But until they do that, you can just do it this way until the cows come home. And that is why I am a master TV calibrator, because I can show you ways around things and even the calibration software to do things differently from how everybody else is doing them.
And that basically concludes how you auto cal and Kalman Studio, but really you can do this with Kalman for Home or any other Kalman software that, again, gives you the option to access any Samsung model from, again, 2022 20, or whatever. Again, just to go over this one final time, you can use multiple models. Like, as you see here, I have quite a few there. It doesn't even matter what it is. You can use a 2020 Q6. You can use a 2021 QLED. All you need is for it to recognize the Samsung white balance way of doing things, both the 2 and 20 point. That's 90% of the calibration right there. Color calibration, arguably very important, but you don't always have to do it. Now, once you do that, that's pretty much it. Again, you guys saw the tutorial on how to set up the IP address and all that, Video Forge Pro. But the most important part, it has to say RAW XYZ. Once it says RAW XYZ, this is basically a placeholder name. The 2022 Samsung QLED will no longer matter because we're doing something entirely different with our color meter. The reason why this would matter is if, let's say, you have a 2022 QLED, but you have this, say, quantum dot. You do not want that to say quantum dot, which is why we have it say RAW XYZ. I kid you not, so long as you follow this tutorial, you will be golden and you will have really low delta errors, as you can clearly see, a max of 0.5, an average of 0.3. I mean, you, you see what I'm saying. A really equalized RGB chart. I mean, look at the delta errors again, and you'll see they're non-existent. And just for dramatic effect, we're going to go into our properties, and then we're going to go over here, okay? And you can do column, you can do line, but what we're gonna go down to do is show targets, just so you can see where it's supposed to target, okay? And you can clearly see the green line is like golden, that's, you know, but the yellow line is your target. We're well below our target across the board. There's nothing touching the red. Again, the target line will show yellow being a delta error of three or lower, hence, if you look here, five, and that's where three is, okay? So delta error three of lower, you have nothing there. But then this is where you start to have a delta error of one or lower. And that's where you start getting into like the ultra anal retentive, if I'm being honest, because you'll, you'll never see a delta error of 0.5 or 0.3. It, that, it's beyond what is perceptible to the human eye, as you can clearly see. But this is what some calibrators like to do to be ultra anal, but you do not have to do that. But again, you can see it here in real time. It's, there you go, grayscale calibration. Very easy, very simple. Pretty much every TV nowadays is adopting a, a common way of doing an auto cal. Hisense has joined, TCL has joined, Samsung has already been in, Sony is in, and LG is in. That's five of all of the TV manufacturers you will ever purchase. And that shows you that no matter what, you can always auto cal your TV. It is a quick process. It's a, it's a painless and easy process. And you can do it affordably now. So again, you no longer need to pay $500 for a calibrator to do this for you. So this is me not gatekeeping and showing you information that they would never show you so that they can keep collecting off of you. And if you like that kind of thing, smack a like on this video. If you dislike the video, make sure you hit that dislike button twice. Thanks for watching the number one brand in honesty. And until the next video, I'll see you guys later.